Hi Year 9, this is Miss Ben. I'm hoping you're all safe and we're just about to get on with a 10 to 15 minute video looking at how you and everyone can use technology in theatre. Okay, following this video there will be a short quiz for you to complete as well and that is all you have to do for your lesson today. So we're going to start with a quote. A quote by a very famous drama man called Peter Brook. Now this quote was from, uh, it's one of the first things I learned in one of my first lessons at university actually. And he says, I can take any empty space and call it a bare stage. A man walks across this empty space whilst someone else is watching him. And this is all that is needed for an act of theatre to be engaged. A stage space has two rules. Anything can happen and something must happen. If we look at that stage, that is uh, quite a typical drama room, okay? Ours at Haverstock is bright, but that's quite untraditional. It's usually painted very dark so that um, it's quite neutral. You can change it for however you want. Now, would you say that that is a stage? I would argue it's not yet a stage. There's no clear place for anyone's performing. There's no uh, seats. There's no sort of lighting facing a different direction. But Peter Brook would argue, as long as there are two people in that room and one of them walks across the room while the other watches, that is theatre. So he thinks theatre has no rules, meaning anything can happen as long as something happens. What we're going to look at is what you could add to this space to make it a stage. What could you add to make it a piece of theatre? Okay, so what do you need first? Well, we need actors. That's pretty obvious, right? I feel like after two and a half years of drama, you know that you need actors to make theatre. So their role, perform lines, follow the director's instructions and bring their character to life. But what else do we actually need? Well, we've got the basics that we might add as well. Actors would wear costume they'd have hair and makeup to make them look like someone else, to show what time period they're from, maybe even to show their personality. But that's quite a basic, isn't it? Another basic is set. So set is the large pieces of furniture, maybe backgrounds um, that show where you are. The actors might not actually use them, it might not touch them, but when you look at it, you can clearly see where it is. For example, this picture we can see is in the middle of a town and there is a perfume shop in the middle. Also basic, the one you have the most experience with, is props. Now props actually stands for properties. And these are the things, the items, the objects, that actors on stage interact with, that they use. Phones, chairs. Uh, walking sticks, the kind of things that you use uh, to show who your character is. Those are the basics. Then we start going to the slightly more technical, okay? Realistically, these three things, you could at least plan or come up with ideas without having been trained. But the next one you need training for. So that's for slightly more complicated and that is lighting, sound, and projection. Okay, so all three of these have the same purpose. It's to create atmosphere, to make the audience feel like they are there with the actors. Okay, so we've got the lighting, spotlights, bright lights, coloured lights, while the audience sat in the dark, all to highlight the performers and add to the atmosphere. And you've got the sound, the sound effects. You might have the microphones, you might have live sound being made. And then finally, a slightly more modern is projection. You can see in this picture here, they're projecting shadows onto the background to add to the sense, to make it creepier, or maybe to show things that, um, that they just couldn't show on stage otherwise, maybe footage or film clips. Now again, all of these we've used to have a stock. The next three we have not used and I can't ever see us actually using these because only professional theatres would use these and they are 
pyrotechnics, smoke machines, and flying rigs. So pyrotechnics is the use of um, explosions or special um, chemical reactions to create fire and smoke on stage, okay? Now, it is really cool, but it is obviously very dangerous. You need to be a specialist and expert. You need safety people around you. You need to make sure that everyone involved, including the actors, is trained so they know what to do to not be near it, uh, what happens if it goes wrong. So I'm just going to actually show you a little video of some pyrotechnics being practiced. So if we watch this just for a second, you will see that they've got these little things here and that's where the explosions are going to come from. Now you can see they're very far away and they've got a nice high ceiling so that the explosion doesn't hit anything. Two, one. Now, that was quite amazing, wasn't it, actually? And you could really see the variety of things that they could do with these special effects. Then we've got smoke machines. Um, smoke machines are really cool. They're much easier to use. And when combined with lights, like in this picture here with blue lights, it can be really powerful. Lastly is something I have no experience with, but I've seen actors in plays using these, and that is called a flying rig. Now, the rig is the machine that is used to help actors fly, okay? So that could be used in any kind of performance. Again, it obviously needs a lot of safety training. The actors need a lot of strength, self-control, and then there's people at the sides that control it. So again, I'm gonna show you a short clip now from uh, the very short-lived musical of Spider-Man in America, which didn't last very long, it was not popular, but they have a really cool scene where Spider-Man uses a fly rig to enter the stage, so let's have a little look. So again, how engaging for the audience that Spider-Man might actually just fly in front of you over your heads, it's amazing. Amazing, and again, it's really exciting, isn't it? Something that people don't think they can see in theatre, and it's an excellent use of technology being used to make theatre uh, more engaging and involve the audience more. Then we've got to think about the future of theatre because where is technology going to take us? Technology has changed in the last 20 years so much. Where is it going to go in theatre? Well, there's a few ideas. Here's a picture of people using 3D projection. So the idea that instead of just projecting onto a flat wall, we can project 3D three-dimensional images and objects. Uh, maybe it would be used in sci-fi, maybe it could be used to uh, make it look like there's a particular object or item on stage. Either way, it's a really cool idea, kind of like a hologram. Next, um, when you design a set, you have to make a mini version of it, okay? So usually you make it out of like little bits of cardboard or matchsticks, things like that. But it's not very realistic. And the idea is that we could use 3D printing, which once you've paid a lot for a 3D printer, it's actually very cheap to make. Um, you can design your sets completely so you can really look at how it's going to look. So you get the using the technology to help with the design process. Very exciting. Here is a picture from The Tempest. And that is where they're using CGI, computer generated images, which you'll have seen hundreds of times in films, but you might not even realize it but they're now looking at using that on stage. For example, this is the character of Ariel, who's obviously a fairy, he's quite mysterious, so this CGI works perfectly, and it can get this character to do things that an actor could never do on stage. Lastly, there's some performances that are starting to use, have the audience to use their own phones. So the idea being, I think, that you would download an app and you can actually use your phones to help decide what happens to the performance which when you think about it is amazing because usually the theatre is somewhere we're told you have to put your phone away, but why not use this technology? And maybe the audience can actually become involved in what happens with the story. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with these, but I think it's quite exciting to see that theatre 
is trying to keep up with technology and keep innovating. But how does this actually all come together to make theatre? Okay, because I've told you the different elements. What does it actually look like? Well, we're going to look at three short examples. The first is from a naturalistic example. So what I mean by that, this is a play that is trying to look like uh, it is actually happening in front of us, okay? So this is a still image, a picture, from the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child play, which is only in the West End on Charing Cross Road, and it is sold out all the time, and it's based on the Harry Potter story. So what different elements of technical theatre do we have? Well, we've got the set. Okay, so we've got lots of dark wood and arches, and it's supposed to look like it's actually at Hogwarts, isn't it? Like, you almost look at it and think, that could be from a film, it looks so realistic. But it's not, it's been built on a stage. Next, props and costumes. Well, they've got the robes, they've got the wands, so that we can completely see who their characters are. Really cool is that they've got pyrotechnics, so they've got real fire torches on the walls. That's not fake, that is actual fire that they trust using. So obviously there's a lot of safety involved in that to check it doesn't burn the actors or burn down the banners. Next, the lighting. Now this has really good lighting. You can see at the top, it's actually got blue coming down. Now I don't know if that's to show that they've got the magical ceiling like in the film, or if it's just to add to the atmosphere, but you've got that. And then lastly, you've got things like uh, more pyrotechnics, for example, the smoke and the special effects coming out of their wands. So instead of just having a flashing light and a uh, a sound effect, they actually have pyrotechnics coming out of the wand, which is really exciting. Imagine being a child who loves Harry Potter and going to see this. It would be amazing. My next example is not a naturalistic place. It is not natural. It is not real life. It's called an abstract piece of theatre. And if you remember back to year seven, abstract means it does not look like real life. Okay, so this is a play called Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And you might have even read this book. It's about a boy called Christopher who's autistic and he runs away from his dad and he tries to find his mum in London. Now you can see right now, this is quite an unusual looking set, isn't it? So let's explore the technical elements they used. Well, the set was four walls. It was like a cube with one wall missing. And um, everywhere on it is equally drawn grids, almost like a line like on uh, grid paper you'd use in maths. And it had lighting projections all over the floor, the ceiling and the walls. It was really, really amazing. The costumes, however, were real. Just to remind you that this is a real person's story, but he doesn't see the world like everyone else does. You've got the lighting, which is blue throughout. And this is where it gets strange. Now, they have these little white boxes you can probably see. And uh, they fit back into the side so that you can't see them. They get pulled out to be seats. They get pulled out to be lots of different things. And then they lift up and inside you've got things like this, like little props supposed to represent London. And lastly, you've got the projections. So on the wall, all of the walls and the ceiling and floor, you've got the projections, for example, here of the London map. Or you can see just below it, you've got the smiley faces. And this is what Christopher uses to show his emotions. It's also got maths equations everywhere, and it just really makes the audience start to think what it must be like to be in Christopher's head. So it's very effective. Just briefly, lastly, again, we're going to look at the play that you, um, most of you in year nine studied before half term. And those of you that didn't, you're going to look at it this term, and that's the Laramie Project. So remember, this is made up of over 80 characters. So they had to find a way with only 12 actors to make you believe they're separate characters. Well, this is what they did. They had a very bare set, blank set with just just chairs, that's it. In fact, you can't even see the walls, can you? It's so dark. All the costumes were realistic, but a lot of the characters are just wearing a coat or a jacket, which they can take off and put on something else to represent a different character. So it's not a full costume. It might just be an element for that character. Then you've got the projections on the back. You've got the big picture of Matthew Shepard and his murderer, Aaron McKinney, next to him. You've also got the smaller projections of the moments, the titles, so the audience can follow along with what is happening because it's quite a fast-paced play. And then you've got the lighting. It's very, very dark here. So that the audience know which actor to focus on at that one moment, they have a spotlight that shines on the actor, as you can see there. So there we've got three very different types of plays. 
different atmospheres, different plots, different purposes. And the technical elements have all been used along with the acting to create the chosen effect. Now, what I want you to do now is go on to show my homework and I want you to complete the quiz. Remember, you've got three attempts to try the quiz. So try your best. Um, And next week we will be having live lessons. So I look forward to seeing you then. Uh, Good luck in the quiz and please keep safe.